Welcome to Dr. Data, where healthcare meets insight. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and join the journey. The NHS Long-Term Workforce Plan specifically calls out the critical role of data in modern healthcare. From a position of personal experience and expertise, I'm going to help you ace the NHS data analytics interview. I have built regional dashboards showing bed availability and occupancy levels for over 27 NHS trusts, modeled using secondary user service and referral to treatment data sets to redesign pathways. I have even had the privilege on working on predictive models that have produced clinically reviewed papers. So whether you're applying for your first NHS analytics job, undergoing a career change, or aiming for promotion, this video will give you the edge to stand out and succeed. Let's go to our thinking board. NHS hiring managers are looking for three things. Technical fluency in tools like SQL, Power BI, and Excel. Clinical context, like understanding pathways, coding, and dataset. Communication is also key. The ability to clearly explain your insights to people from non-data backgrounds. So tip number one. Use the keywords of each domain strategically to demonstrate your expertise. For example, when discussing Power BI, use keywords like transforming the data, power query, measures, semantic models, visualizations, bookmarks, dashboards, and reports. Instead of saying, I created a report in Power BI, say, I used Power Query to clean and transform the data built custom measures to calculate readmission rates, and structured everything within a reusable semantic model. I designed dynamic visualizations with interactive bookmarks and published the insights as a shareable dashboard and report for clinical managers. What do you think of that statement? Now thinking of keywords when using Excel, use pivot tables, charts, conditional formatting. Instead of saying something generic like, I analyze data, say, I built an interactive dashboard using pivot tables to summarize admission trends, applied conditional formatting and formulas to flag critical values, and used charts to visually present monthly variations for clinical nurse leads. Doesn't that statement sound more comprehensive? Consider keywords for showing expertise in SQL, use joins, stored procedures, grouping, and clauses. Instead of saying, I pulled data with SQL, say, I wrote optimized SQL queries using inner and left joins to combine clinical and operational data across multiple tables. I implemented group by to summarize patient volume by week and created reusable stored procedures for performance monitoring. I also used where clauses for precise filtering and applied window functions to calculate rolling averages for discharge trends for operational managers. Do you think that statement showed deeper understanding? Think about keywords that show you understand clinical context, such as using statistical terminologies and referencing healthcare datasets. Instead of saying the results improved over time, say, using data from the hospital episode statistics dataset, I analyzed patient readmission trends and observed a 12% year-on-year decrease in 30-day emergency readmissions. Our site's performance moved into the 95th percentile nationally compared to similar sized trusts. Such a statement shows that you consider the context. Now let's summarize our key tips. Don't treat the job description like a generic checklist. Research the department and likely target audience. Look up their interests and study the specific KPIs, datasets, or tools they mention. Mirror their language and use the keywords in your interview. It shows you've done your homework and think like an insider. Describe the awesome things you have achieved with statistical terms. Some people refer to the STAR method, which is situation, task, action, and result when interviewing. However, did you notice how in each example I always had a target audience? Always mention your target audience for the work you deliver. Insider's tip, tailor your answers, based on the interests of the individuals on your interview panel. Most importantly, don't forget to breathe once, breathe twice, and smile. It needs people like you. And how to step into the mindset that gets you hired and fulfilled. When I started in NHS data, I had no idea how wide the impact could be and the personal impact I could make. We often talk about skills. SQL, Power BI, Excel. 
but let's zoom out. What you're actually doing in an NHS analytics role is saving lives indirectly by improving how the system runs. As one NHS Trust CEO put it, without analysts, we don't know if we're helping people or just treating symptoms. You're answering questions like, why are stroke patients waiting longer in this trust? Which pathway is costing more than it should? Are mental health services reaching high need areas? That's not just data, that's impact. The NHS employs over 10,000 people in analytics and informatics roles across England. And that number is growing year on year. So how do you stand out? You need to show three things. First, you understand the data sets. Applicants who referenced NHS datasets were three times more likely to progress past the interview shortlist. The key ones. Hospital episode statistics used for activity. Secondary uses service used for financial and tariff-based commissioning. Referral to treatment for waiting time standards. These some of the key datasets to keep in mind. They form the basis for elective recovery plans, operational KPIs, and transformation projects. Second thing you need to stand out is connect your work to outcomes. Every 36 hours, the NHS handles over 1 million patient interactions. Each one generates multiple rows of data. Don't just say, I built a dashboard. Say what problem it solved, what question it answered, or what decision it supported. Third thing is, you care about the system working better. Many analysts get hired not because they are the most technical on the day, but they show the personality of someone who has the right mindset. In a recent analyst recruitment round in the Midlands, over 200 people applied, but only those who connected technical skills to patient outcomes were shortlisted. The best NHS analytics professionals share four traits. Curiosity, always asking, what's underneath this number? Clarity, can explain a complex chart to non-technical staff. Clinical respect, understand that behind every row is a patient. Confidence, knows when to challenge assumptions with evidence. For example, did you know emergency 30-day readmissions cost the NHS over 1.6 billion per year? When a child misses a referral to pediatrics, that's not just admin. That's data that didn't work. How can we improve that? Organizations with embedded BI teams were 40% more likely to meet elective care targets. Therefore, 95% of NHS leaders say data is now mission critical to operational performance. So you're not just learning data, you're learning to speak the language of one of the most important systems in the country. And that's why I'll keep showing up here to help you speak it fluently. This is Dr. Data. I'll see you in the next episode. If you walked into an NHS analytics interview right now, could you predict what they'll ask? Because if you can't, someone else will. In this episode, I'm revealing five real NHS interview questions and the exact strategies that turn your answers into job offers. This isn't theory. It's what actually works in the room when it matters. Let's go. Question one. Tell us how you've worked with large NHS datasets. Why they ask it. To test real-world NHS experience or research. How to answer. I built pivot dashboards working with hospital episode statistics, HES, to analyze emergency readmissions across trusts. This showed year-on-year -year trends and cross-referenced it with SUS for tariff validation. It gave clinical leads evidence to redesign discharge protocols. Power tip. Mention scale, datasets, structure, and one clinical, operational impact. Question 2. Can you give an example where your insight led to a change? Why they ask it? NHS panels want to know if your work drives real decisions. How to answer. Using RTT data, I modeled median wait times across departments. One pathway exceeded the 18-week standard by six weeks. I presented the insight to a triage board using Power BI. It led to a reallocation of outpatient slots, cutting breach rate by 23%. The operational manager was very satisfied with the results. Power tip. Always include the dataset, the audience, and the change that followed. Question 3. 
How do you explain complex data to non-technical stakeholders? Why they ask it. They need analysts who can speak in plain English to clinical and operational staff. How to answer. For a project on A&E flow, I used Power BI visualizations to illustrate peak congestion hours. Not with numbers, but with color-coded heat maps and patient flow diagrams from the ED dataset. I compared it to rush hour traffic, so clinical leads could instantly relate. Power tip. Use analogies, visual storytelling, and context the audience already understands. Question 4. What KPIs would you use to monitor A&E performance? Why they ask it. To see if you understand NHS metrics, pressures, and patient flow. How to answer. I'd include. I would produce a report on PowerPoint with a 4-hour breach rate. Ambulance handover delays from ED dataset. Time to triage. Reattendance within 7 days. And discharge versus admission rates. These give a balanced view of throughput, pressure points, and patient safety. Power tip. Mention why each KPI matters, not just what it is. Question 5. How do you ensure data quality in your work? Why they ask it. NHS decisions rely on robust, clean data. How to answer. I begin with data profiling in Power Query, looking for nulls, duplicates, outliers. I validate against NHS data dictionary definitions. I often run summary checks in CQL and triangulate fields against SUS or RTT extracts. And crucially, I review with clinical teams before publishing. Power tip. Mention validation, dictionary standards, and clinical sign-off. Those are real NHS analytics questions. And real strategies to answer with clarity, context, clinical respect, and confidence. If you want more examples like this, hit like, subscribe, and share this with someone preparing for their NHS interview. And remember, your answers don't just show your skills. They show how ready you are to serve the system. AI tools like ChatGPT and Microsoft Copilot are becoming go-to assistants for writing NHS job applications and CVs. But here's the catch. They can both make critical errors that could cost you an interview. In this video, we're breaking down five common mistakes these tools make and how you can fix them. Let's go. Let's start with NHS data. ChatGPT and Copilot both sometimes provide outdated or surface level information. Why? Because ChatGPT's default model has a knowledge cutoff and Copilot relies on the context of your document, not official sources. I've seen both tools still mention clinical commissioning groups and at times even reference the wrong provider codes. A major red flag. At least at the time of this video, it was able to correct itself with an additional prompt from someone who knows that these policies. This error was caused due to organizational changes in NHS, which are happening all the time. Catchment area, trust merger, and more. Insider tip. Double check any data ChatGPT provides on NHS policies. Use NHS England or gov.uk as sources. On to the next one. Mistake two is all about language. Both tools often generate CVs with vague, generic phrases. Team player, excellent communicator. But the NHS uses scoring frameworks that demand specific evidence tied to job criteria. Imagine 100 CVs sent and 80 of them sound exactly the same. Well, you can imagine that it won't take the panel long to drop you from the shortlist and identify someone who took their time to embed their uniqueness within their CV. What they both fail to do natively is align content to the NHS person specification and use methodologies like the STAR format or other similar effective methods. We discussed the four C's in one of our previous episodes. So insider tip. Iterate with ChatGPT, ask it to utilize some of these methodologies and to match them the the band and NHS person specification alongside a personally provided mock draft. Another three to go? Both tools mention privacy, but often miss legal detail. Ask Copilot or ChatGPT how to handle patient data, and you'll usually get I ensure confidentiality and privacy, but no mention of GDPR, Caldecott principles, or the Data Protection Act 2018. 
In NHS interviews, especially clinical roles, you need to show explicit knowledge of these frameworks, not just general best practice. Power tip. Prompt the AI to include GDPR and Caldecott principles when describing patient data handling. Next, two more to go. Mistake four is especially relevant to NHS data analysts or BI developers. AI tools like ChatGPT and Copilot often oversimplify complex healthcare data metrics or use them incorrectly altogether. This is a textbook style answer, but that doesn't account for NHS definitions, such as counting methods, exclusions, or required timeframes. That kind of oversimplification can be dangerous in reports, dashboards, or FOI responses, especially when decisions are made off the back of this data. Next, last one. Missing NHS values and six Cs. Both ChatGPT and Copilot miss these important core NHS value unless you explicitly ask, such as compassion, communication, and commitment to quality care. These values aren't optional, they are scoring criteria in interviews and shortlisting. Tools that don't include them put you at a disadvantage. Power tip. Use prompt that use these values, e.g. fix. I'm compassionate. I uphold compassion and commitment to quality in line with NHS values. Let's be clear. ChatGPT and Microsoft Copilot are powerful tools, but they're just that. Tools. They won't think like an NHS recruiter. They won't score you points unless you guide them. You've still got to take the shot, align it with the criteria, and land it in the net. Avoid these mistakes. Iterate with purpose. Use AI not to replace your effort, but to amplify your impact. Do that consistently, and that NHS dream job? It's not just possible, it's inevitable. Like, comment, and subscribe.